back to the Steampunk Death Rado channel. This is the place for news and reviews of that most wonderful fictional genre, Steampunk. Also, general fantasy, sci-fi, and a little bit of history now and then. So, I have been slacking off for a while. <laughs> I've been really in the doldrums. Nothing, I mean, no crises or anything, just a matter of being busy. I've just being in the doldrums as far as this channel is concerned. And so I figured I had to do something a little bit different to get, to get myself back into the groove. And I have hit on the idea of doing a state of steampunk address, kind of like the U.S. President gives to Congress. And as with the Chief Executive of the United States, this will be my opinion, and uh, the opposition is free to make a rebuttal or any kind of, of counterstatements in the comments below. Please do so. Uh, unlike the politician, I will strive to be as honest as possible. As so many classic jokes begin, I have good news and I have bad news. First, bad news. Steampunk, at least the fictional side of it, has never quite gotten back to the immense popularity it had in the peak years of, say, 2008, 2009, 2000 to 2012 or so. At the major publishing houses, it seems like Steampunk's pretty toxic. I mean, I've been, I did kind of an informal, kind of informal uh, survey of that, looking at some of the top tier publishers, uh, most of whom have a sci-fi imprint. And as far as this goes, I don't see a lot of steampunk coming out. Uh, and uh, though Tor had, for example, a couple of black steampunk authors being promoted, which I think is great, was wonderful, the more the merrier. Although, again, as with steampunk, the more writers the better. And uh, another, th uh, another thing that seems uh, to be big these days is Afrofuturism, which is kind of a, that's, that's kind of like uh, steampunk. And, 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 and sometimes the, it actually intersects, as in the case of P. Jelly Clark, one of my favorite uh, black steampunk writers, I think. You have a lot of futuristic elements in that kind of thing. Yeah, but anyway, it just seems like they're not, it's not a big deal for the, for the big guys. And furthermore, you know, a lot of the steampunk luminaries of the past, uh, big writers like Scott Westerfeld, Sherry Priest, uh, they don't read it anymore <laughs> that I'm aware of. Uh, they moved on, probably because they're, you know, the publishers aren't looking for it. Uh, the world of TV and movies, now that's a mixed bag, too. We had one major steampunk movie uh, in the last few years, Mortal Engines, uh, which was directed by Peter Jackson. It was a a wonderful, there's a wonderful series, wonderful YA series it's based on, and and I thought it was very good, and Mrs. Desperado enjoyed it as well, and it's a very unique and, and uh, creative premise of uh, mobile cities moving around, uh, moving around to a, a, a post-apocalyptic world, and yet it didn't do well. The critics didn't like it, and it didn't really make its money back, so that doesn't bode well for more like it. Um, Go a little further back, the Golden Compass, which was kind of steampunk-ish. Not really touted as such, but it didn't get well received, and so it didn't get made more uh, more of them. And uh, at least not in the movies. And there were also a couple projects that people were pushing, like, uh, for example, uh, Aaron Morgenstern's wonderful novel, Night Circus, about a magical circus with lots of wonderful gadgets. That never got made in a movie, and... Uh, Lantern City was another project that, that some people were publishing, pushing that they wanted to be a series or could have been a movie, but that never got made either. On the other hand, we do have some streaming stuff. For example, Golden Compass did get made into a streaming series, which was also very, which was, well, actually, although it didn't have, you know, the top tier actors in it like the movie had, it still was, it was actually really good. I mean, as far as the ones I've seen so far. That was a good thing. Also, um, also uh, Carnival Row, <laughs> which got delayed by COVID. Boo, boo. But it's coming out this uh, fall. And that's kind of a very cool fantasy world with uh, a kind of a Victorian uh, society that's got, uh, L they got fairies and uh, uh, fairies and satyrs and other interesting mythological creatures living in it. Uh, and uh, Arcane was kind of a surprise hit. Uh, based on the video game, even though the video game, as far as I could tell, doesn't have a lot to do with steampunk, but yet they kind of infuse that into the story. Now, I think 
I don't think the decline of steampunk can be to reader to reader fatigue. And even when that happens, uh, something that's popular always comes back. For example, vampires. If, if they've gone through cycles. A popular novel gets written, or a popular you know, or a popular series or movies come out, and everybody's writing them, and then the publishers don't want it anymore, and then after a little while they bring it back. For example, Anne Rice's Interview with a Vampire, which is wonderful. And uh, but then later on they had True Blood, and later on they had Twilight. So it just keeps coming back. So why hasn't steampunk come back? Well, it certainly isn't because people don't like it, because you see a lot of steampunk channels on Instagram where people are dressing up and doing their art and so on, and they're very, very popular. There's tons of them, dozens of them, maybe hundreds. And so that's at least, I don't know if they would watch a steampunk series, but they might. They very well might. If you've been watching my channel, you've heard my theory on this. Uh, I, in particular, I did a, a um, show called Is Steampunk Political? And I meant to call it Is Steampunk Racist, but I kind of chickened out and changed the title, thinking that maybe maybe I'd get censored or down, downgraded if uh, or shadow banned if I used the term. Although I might have attracted more viewers, I don't know. Of course, my argument was that it wasn't. <laughs> Even though some people were saying it was, and, my, and, and that that was the reason, that was one major reason why the, the big publishers didn't want to touch it anymore, even if people wanted it. It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like um, Marvel and DC putting all this diversity in their comics and changing well-loved characters, changing their, their gender, changing, changing their race, and all that stuff, when the readers aren't looking for that, uh, because of ideology, I guess. So, and that was one of the problems with steampunk was that a number of writers, you know, so-called progressive writers, were writing that oh, steampunk is, is evil because it writes, it glorifies colonialism, and that was just bad. There were steampunk um, writers themselves who kind of apologized, saying, "Well, we know the Victorian era was bad, but we we write to criticize that." And then there were uh, a, a couple of uh, minority steampunk fans slash writers who were coming out and criticizing the community for not being inclusive enough, which was silly because it was always very inclusive in my view. And that that idea percolates out. And even when people are trying to deny it, you get the effect of the lady doth protest too much, basically, as the Bard said. It's not it, it's not that it it's not that it is, it isn't. Or never was. And but people get that idea, and that's a problem these days. It's hard to even celebrate uh, traditional heroes like George Washington. Uh, you, you definitely can't say anything good about the Confederacy, even though there were people like General Lee and stuff who were good people, good men and heroes in their own in their own sphere. Uh, probably a big platform for saying that. So that's my theory: is that that's why steampunk was kind of disappearing, and the only. The only writers they could continue to promote were black writers who would say bad things about slavery. <laughs> well, of course, yeah, of course, slavery was bad. Of course, you would say that. But as for me, I don't make any apologies for for America, for my European heritage, for Western civilization and Christendom. Don't make any apologies at all. Not perfect. Nothing is. But no worse than any other civilization, if you really look at it honestly. And that's my opinion. If you don't like it, don't read my books. Don't watch my cha channel. <laughs> uh, or, you know, maybe you could just, maybe you could be like uh, Howard Stern. A lot of people watched him who hated, or listened to him, rather, who hated him. Um, as soon as they made it pay, as soon as they made it for pay, I stopped listening. <laughs> that's just, just the way I am. So, anyway, just as a brief aside, I have three steampunk books out there. One is uh, the cool character Fidelio Espinoza, the uh, uh, gay Cuban adventurer. <laughs> and then there's uh, the Ion D series. Uh, she's a plucky young heroine, uh, young American uh, professor making it in the, the Victorian world, or Edwardian to be more precise. I have two of those out, uh, co-written with my lovely wife, uh, Mrs. Desperado, and a third on the way pretty soon, so look for that. It'll be called uh, Professor Ion D and the Steam Powered Minotaur. All is not lost for steampunk aficionados. Steampunk is not canceled. It's not like been taken. It hasn't been taken off Amazon like the Confederate flag. 
uh, it is it is not yet banned and so there's a lot of uh, self-published small press and so on books out there that are available you can still get them uh, and uh, <clears throat> For example, as, as, a, as a brief survey, I entered Steampunk into books on Amazon. I got 75 pages of results. Just look for the first five pages, for example. And on those, I got about 30 novels or novel series or, or story collections. And 20 of those were published within the last five years, well after the, the, um, the, the, the peak of the Steampunk boom. And most of those people were people I've never heard of. <laughs> and which is good, which is very good. And you know, I've read a, n a number of of uh, books by unknowns, and some of them are really, really good. And I will go and get into that in a upcoming video. And interestingly enough, a lot of the entries, about half of them at least, were like steampunk coloring books. <laughs> Big deal, I guess. Steampunk craft books, um, rule books for. Uh, um, Tabletop games are for, you know, for role-playing games. Um, photography and art books, very cool. I mean, it's, good that, it's good that all that's out there. But it still says that style is, in some ways, a little bit more important than the actual fiction itself. To sum up, steampunk is still not back to where it was in the peak years. It still has not quite regained its reputation. It still suffers from a little bit of a stigma of being a racist and colonialist and all that nonsense. Uh, which is not true, uh, but it survives quite well on, uh, you know, as far as small press and uh, self-published and streaming series. You're, you're really seeing streaming series, uh, several that have been, been good steampunk or quality steampunk. So thanks for, for bearing with me. Please uh, tell me what you think about that in the comments below. Please uh, like and subscribe. That helps us get out the good steampunk gospel. And this is the Steampunk Desperado saying, Adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary. <laughs>